Welcome to the Verna Verde Sports Show. I'm your host, Jacob Verde. We're bringing you some more LSU practice footage. We're going to start things off like we usually do. Let's show you the offensive side of the things. Uh, with the running back room, it's kind of similar to what we expected. They're going to split back between Josh Williams and John Emery. But John Emery's sporting a, num a new number, number 22, kind of freshened some things up a little bit. He entered the transfer portal. C.J. Daniels came in. He has the number four. So he's going he's gonna to sport a New Jersey number here. You saw him get a little active, get a couple breakaway runs throughout this practice session. One of the big takeaways that I have is just, you know, they're gonna have to beat this drum all season long to continue to develop the pass game, to get Nussmeier comfortable in the pocket, just to kind of have this offense flow smoothly. Your running game is gonna be your X factor. Um, you know, the offensive line is gonna be a, it's gonna be a big strength and a big boost to be able to get that going because you've got two very big mainstays on both sides of the ball. You're gonna be able to have that edge protection kind of seal those gaps a little better. You see John Emery right here. He looks smooth. He doesn't look hurry. He doesn't really look banged up. He kind of is moving pretty comfortably, which is a good sign, you know, especially coming off of an ACL injury. A lot of people have to get comfortable again. You got to trust your body. You got to trust your joints. Trust that you're healthy, really, in general. And I mean, I've seen nothing but positive things from him. He looks like he's not missing a beat. And yeah, it might take some getting used to to see him at number 22. But I mean, I think it's pretty good. Going forward, the New Jersey number changes while we're on the topic. Number zero will be sported by Paris Shan on the defensive side of things, Xavier Thomas on the offensive side of things. Uh, number one, Ashton Stamps, your cornerback. Number two, Jordan Gilbert. Chris Hilton Jr. moves to number three, as well as Greg Penn the third. PJ Willen sporting number 11, Zai Alexander number 14, Tredez Green number 14, Jelani Watkins 17, and Juwan Johnson number 20. Four. You see right here, Camorian Pimpton getting active. Shout out to our guy KP. He looks like he's in a pretty solid tight end two spot. And I mean, he's been getting some good active reps. He's a big target and he's a, a trustworthy guy, you know. And also you see Ricky Collins out there in that second group throwing to Jelani Watkins right here. I would expect big things from Jelani. I mean, not just because he's popping off in CFB 25, but he's getting that trust. He's getting those opportunities. He's getting those touches, those reps right out there on the practice field. It is day one of fall camp, so we're not going to get, you know, too excited too early as you see Josh Williams break away for one here. But it looks like everything's about as expected. You know, Ricky Collins will be your backup. It seems to be... Kind of, not necessarily your smarter choice, but just your, your maybe your safer choice with how long he's been in the scheme. You kind of get to see A.J. Swan throw one here to Shelton, who's getting guarded by J.K. Johnson. He comes down with it. And that's not the only catch that Shelton Samson came down uh, with today that was, you know, flashy and that was attention grabbing. He's really making a name for himself as well. I wrote down some of our, you know, bigger names that popped off during this wide receiver slash tight end um, positional period first things first cj daniels i think he had a pretty good period and then you know of course shelton sampson another one right here just grabbing over jk's head you see corey raymond almost in disbelief i'm sure jk's gonna hear about this one shortly but it, it was a good press coverage you kind of get to see a little bit of competitiveness and the iron sharpens iron that you it really can only make things better in this situation but shout out shelton sampson that's another one of the names i had written down of course Camoria Pimpton, he's getting active. I got him uh, with a little star next to his name. You see CJ Daniels right here getting active. I think this will be one of the more underrated pieces of that wide receiver room. A lot of people talking about Kyron Lacey, a lot of people talking about Chris Hilton, not enough people talking about CJ Daniels. I mean, he's not only just gonna be a, you know, a big wide receiver three bolstering uh, piece, he could potentially be in a slot, he could potentially be a vertical deep threat. At Liberty, you know, he really wore a lot of different hats and I feel like it's going to be able to translate here no matter you know the the amount of speed that changes no matter the scheme that changes even though he's playing big boy sec ball now i think he'll gel in really smoothly he'll be a big big piece into this room um another thing that i've noticed here garrett nussmeyer he, he seems to be really comfortable in this position and i mean we've said it for months now we've talked to him a few times since he's gotten that starting role but just one more time to see him debut in practice as quarterback one. He took it, you know, by the horn, so to speak. And I feel like everything went pretty smoothly. This is a pretty funny moment. I'll kind of let you hear it here. But Coach BK letting them have it. This is how you get everybody on the same page. You know, you want to break together. You don't want to go to your next drill. He's like, what the hell? What other drill we got to worry about? Y'all got to come together as a team. When I say huddle up, it's offense, it's defense. It don't matter who it is. Everyone has to come together. 
This is how you get that chemistry on the same page. This is how you get those guys on the same page. But let's move toward the defensive side of the ball. I know y'all been chomping at a bit to be able to see what's out there, what scheme, what personnel, what units, if you will. Your linebacker group is going to be headlined by, of course, Harold Perkins and Greg Penn. Greg Penn is in that number three jersey, new for this year. See Coach Blake Baker giving a little coaching up to Jordan Gilbert, who's sporting that number two. In the star position on the other side of the field, you got Major Burns, who's going to be playing a lot closer to the line, a lot closer to the ball. If you ask me, that's going to help in terms of you know, that aggressive play style that he has. A lot of people were worried about him going deep. Well, guess what? You're not going to have to worry about it as much. On the corner side of things, this side of the ball, you've got Ashton Stamps. On the other side of the ball, you have Sage Ryan. He's going to swap in and out with J.K. Johnson. And that's that's what we see right now. That's the, that's the pairing that they have. That doesn't mean that's what Corey Raymond and company are going to stick with all season. So, I mean, you can comment below what kind of tweaks or, or lineup uh, changes you can expect. You got Bo Davis here, you know, preaching up against Woolmack and Tank. And you got Savion Jones. You got your usual suspects, if you will. I think... Um, you know, even with guys like Preston, it's not going to be a completely immature defensive line. It's not going to be a defensive line you're really going to have to fret about all the time. No, it's not your usual LSU, you know, stars with the size and the strength. And I'm not trying to scoff at what we got right now. We do have talent. And I'm going to use a comparative, you know, analogy to last year. Last year, a lot of people complained about the defense and a lot of people, you know, rightfully so. But a lot of people had a lot of things to say. And then you move to the NFL draft and three defensive linemen get their name called and are now playing on Sunday. So what I'm meaning at is there could be a lot of diamonds in the rough. There could be a lot of people on this team that have potential to tap or that have, you know, a developmental plan to stick to. And then they're going to be able to grow leaps and bounds, you know, night and day, if you will. I think Corey Raymond and Blake Baker, they've, they've, they've tuned up this defense just about as much as you can in an offseason. Um, they're working on the little things still. Yeah, even if you bring it back to that huddle, you know, you, you want to make sure that all your guys are on the same page, leaving together. No one's bigger than the team. No position group's bigger than the team. Keep the main thing the main thing. And those little tiny um, boosts to that, I feel, you know, they're, they're getting ironed out. The wrinkles can only be, you can only just go through the motions to see it. You can't really pick everything in an offseason out. You're going to have to just get to week one, see what has to be changed. Or you're just going to have to get to fall camp, see what issues arise. Like sometimes you're just going to have to live in the moment and let these things come to you. And with the defense, that's really what's going to have to happen. Whenever you see this personnel out against USC, there's going to be a couple of issues with the pass defense. And that's how you're going to be able to diagnose it. Of course, you want to see it in fall camp. Of course, you want to try to you know pick through it as best as you can. But with things like this, this is the lineup that they have. You know, they've seen the potential that it has. Doesn't mean it's gonna be concrete. Doesn't mean it's finalized. Doesn't mean this is gonna be what we're gonna see through week 12, week 13, week 14. A lot of changes are gonna happen. Sometimes injuries happen. You know, sometimes different things pop up. Uh, something I do wanna note, um, Toviano was in attendance for this practice today. I'm not too sure if he's gonna be, you know, uh, at fall camp through the entire period or, you know, if the suspension is just, you know, not in there yet because of a charge being dropped. I'm not too sure in that situation. I'm sure Coach Kelly will touch on that one soon, you know, in his press conference. But I didn't want to make that note. Toviano is on the field. Um, he was in attendance. He is in that rotation potentially. You know, he could have been a starting piece to that. And then you had that roadblock. But, you know, that could potentially be mitigated here. In this part of the video, it's, it's a little interesting. But they had us up on the second level. They had a little tent. At first, we were kind of confused. We were wondering if that was going to be our vantage point for the entire practice. We eventually moved down, got the footage you saw in the first half of this video. But right here, you just kind of see some pad work. You got Whit Weeks, you got Harold Perkins, you got Greg Penn getting open, trying to just, you know, get, get the juices flowing, get the blood flowing, get back into that grind. Here's Toviano right here. And a lot of people kind of had the same reaction. They were kind of like, all right, well, I'm guessing he's going to be clear to go for the season. And I would kind of make that assumption as well. Like I said, though, Coach Kelly is going to have to confirm that one for us here in the press conference. Uh, but go ahead and comment anything that you want to see from these practices. We have another one tomorrow. We've got about six more through the next two days. I'm going to, you know, continue with the same triage list like we did. We're going to look for the defensive things. Uh, of course, you want to see the quarterback play. Running back room, I feel like that one's kind of getting understood. We saw what we needed to see today. It's going to be a split back, you know, situation. You saw Caleb Jackson get in and out but i think his role develops as the season progresses you've kind of got to do what we said with the defensive personnel i mean as of right now you got two very good experienced running backs 
And if push comes to shove, if the opportunity presents itself and Caleb Jackson gets the ball, you know, he gets his shot and he, he, he takes it and he, you know, he runs with it. He takes it and he has a, a breakout game or, you know, he really shows flashes of what we think he could be. Then, you know, you're in a different situation. But as of right now, you just kind of got to go with not necessarily the safest option, but just the most clear option. And that would be a start and split both of your five-year experience backs, you know. I've kind of talked on the point for the past few months that LSU has probably the most experienced running back room. You can probably pair that with the most experienced offensive line. That's why I would throw this into being their X factor. Now, really, you're going to have to see the defense just click, simply put. I mean, we can watch this fall camp footage as much as we want. We can hypothesize what corners are going to be out there, who could be out and back up, who could be the best tandem. We could go on and on and on, but it's not going to really it's not going to create no substance. You're going to have to see these guys just perform when the lights turn on. You're going to have to see Corey Raymond and Blake Baker come together, create a scheme, get their guys on the same page, and get LSU's defense back in motion. You see right here, Camorian Pimpton and Mason Taylor working with each other. And I like this because Mason Taylor, phenomenal tight end, but guess what? He can't be around forever. He's not going to be in purple and gold his entire career. Eventually, he's going to have to go get paid and go play big boy football on Sundays. So why not, you know, pour into the younger guys like Pimpton, like Tredez Green, not only to make them weapons, not only to help them fulfill their potential, but pass that torch. Because LSU's in a new spot right now, in a sense where their tight ends could really be more of a focal point of their offense. When in past years, there really hasn't even been much tight end talent to choose from, if you will. But that's been our practice update. Like I said, comment below what you want to see from tomorrow's practice or any practices in the future. We're going to continue to go live Monday, Wednesday, Fridays at 11 a.m. This has been the Vernon Verdict. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a good one.